Today we are talking about the Asus AX88U. And should you buy it? Mm, why and why not? Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos Rentas. Today we're talking Asus AX88U and the reasons to be buying it, the reasons not to be buying it, and uh, basically get you more of an informed opinion about it. So when I'm looking at this unit, we have to remember that it is a 2019 unit. The new ones that we've been reviewing, the AX86 and the AX82 are the newer ones of 2020. And we need to put in perspective why or why not these thing, these units all relate and what's good and what's bad based on workflow, based on what you are doing, based on your circumstances. So to start off with this router, I've been using it for about a year. And for me personally, I purchased this because I was looking at scenarios with my workflow. I was looking at it from perspective as Synology box where I'm transferring all my data onto there and then I'm working off of that. I was wired in and editing in the same location got boring. I need something that I can move around, be in different locations, editing off my laptop. So along comes Wi-Fi 6. I looked at Wi-Fi 6 and I asked myself, well, what can I do with this? I put the new chip in, I tested out some routers and yes, I did test this one, the uh, Asus, which people have been yelling me about pronouncing it right. All my life has been Asus, but it's Asus, uh, so I will try to work on that. And the Netgear. Now, the Netgear was the Rax 80, and I tested both. And uh, at the end of the day, what I was trying to achieve is steady data transfer between my laptop and the Synology box. This did a better job on that. However, they were very equivalent, uh, you know, and what one with this was that and as well as the interface behind. Um, and, and for me personally, you know, I wasn't expecting all the greatness that came out of this machine in my workflow because automatically I'm getting up to two gigabit speed transfer rates. I can edit 4K no problem. This is amazing. So we're talking about 200 to 220 megabits, megabytes per second transfer rates. It's insane. Now you're not even going to get that on a landline that is like a one gigabit port. So this is quite the machine. Now, when I looked at it, I was looking at my workflow, I was looking at who was on and who was using what. So I needed to make sure that I can establish that data transfer speed. Other people will not be needing this. Other people will be needing something like Zoom calls being not dropped, playing video games and not seeing that slowdown. You have a whole family at home. Everybody's using the internet. There's multiple devices. It slows everything down. And this is where the router comes into play. So if you're looking at it from perspective of, hey, I've contacted my provider. I can't get any faster download speed. And at the end of the day, it won't solve your problem. This will. Those slowdowns will be very limited to what you've been experiencing with one of these machines. And what will happen is you'll start to appreciate more technology for sure. And you'll see for the future what you should be moving to. Now, when I'm looking at it from a perspective of time, energy, and money, I'm looking at it and saying, how am I investing into this? This is, a, is an expensive unit and we'll get into it in uh, the latter part of this video, but it is expensive. And I have to look at it from a perspective of what can it achieve and of what is inside. So let's jump over to review dongnose.com's stats because he does a great job with it. And we'll walk you through that and I'll give you two, my two cents on it. If you've never been here, uh, this guy does a lot of reviews on different things, but he focuses on something like this and he says, hey, what's best for most uh, users? And when you're looking at this, he, he does make his videos too. We're just gonna jump down to the stats here. And I wanted to just emphasize the idea of the, you know, what we're looking at here. So the five gigahertz performance, when we're looking and comparing between everything, he's getting his speeds at 910 um, uh, in comparison to the high end, which are, you know, 1413. Now, when we're looking at these high speeds, we need to remember that these are megabits per second. So we're we're looking at these and we're saying, how fast is the internet coming in? It would be a gigabit. So now you're you're looking at this and you're saying, if my, you know, can my computer actually do this? And do I have Wi-Fi 6 that I can actually do? So this is the five gigahertz Wi-Fi wi performance. Now, as we, we look at it from a perspective of uh, what exists with a 2.4, we see there there's a drop here. And in fact, there are other 
routers that could do a better job. Now, that being said, as we look at more uh, issues that arise from this, we do look at this idea of the NAS performance, and this is where something comes in where you are, now I, I have gotten higher rates in this, and I've been very happy with what I've been getting. Now, at the beginning I didn't, there were some firmware upgrades and this occurred, so I'm not sure um, at what point did these changes happen, but uh, you're seeing that at the end of the day, this is at the top of the game with the rest of the um, routers that are out there that are available. At the same time, I could tell you that I've tested some of these other uh, routers and I have not had the same uh, results like the the Netgear ones. I did not have the same results that uh, dongnose.com has. So um, it's something to really think about. Now in comparison, I was getting 192 megabytes per second. Very, very uh, cool numbers here. A little bit higher than uh, the average that I've been seeing online from different people. I do have the Synology uh, 918 Plus and then I do have some uh, uh, bigger um, enterprise drives. So they do hit 250 megabytes per second um, rather easy. So, and they don't struggle. It's like, you know, their lifespan is massive and they do a great job with the caching. So this transfer rate of getting up to 186, this was averaging in and around here. And when we look at it from a perspective of uh, the ability for this to write at 225, that is awesome. Now, is it sustained at these speeds? And this is the problem. It's not. It, it is sustaining at lesser speeds on the writes. And there is a lot of caching ha happening with the buffering and uh, the buffers and all that and uh, the, the Synology. However, this is the uh, approximate average that I, I have been getting. In comparison to the 86U, in comparison to the 86U, you're seeing this 194 megabyte per second, and the sustained speed and writes were hitting in the 200s. It was awesome, 220 megabytes per second, and I'm averaging that. And this is like stable, and it's actually, you know, you're seeing 195 to 220. You can see some of these dips here, uh, but overall, they are, you know streamlined, and especially when you're copying back to the desktop, it's it's, it's flying, it's flying. So I mean. Super happy with the numbers. It is up there. The 86U is doing a better job. However, um, you know, it would be negligible if you were looking at it while you were working. You would not be, uh, you know, paying attention to it that much because you wouldn't see the, the difference that, that much with your work progress. Again, the stats are there. They are great. And you look at it and you say, well, what's inside? Because this is the issue with routers. There's a lot of manufacturers. And again, I did go for the Netgear and I tested that out. Now, TP-Link, I tested the TP-Link out before I moved into the studio looking for a second one. And then, you know, I looked at the, went back to ASUS and looked at the 86 and the 82. And honestly, this unit still was a comparable one. And that's why I had to look at the 86U and it, which was meeting what's inside. So let's jump into what's inside of this so we can understand more of what this can deliver. This does drive the idea that it does connect with like pretty much any network standards. It does have this AX performance and this is where we see this interest and I wanna really talk about this because we're looking at it, we're saying, what is the total amount of speed that's gonna come in? We call this an AX6000 because they, they sell it as a 6000 megabyte per second, um, uh, megabit per second router, but the reality is that that's if you add up all of these. So you're you're adding the 2.4 to the 5. And this is the, the thought process here. Why? You know, why, why do they advertise it like that? Well, in theory, you can get that much bandwidth altogether if you have, you know, a few people on, like if I had my connection with the NAS and I'm working off my NAS while my, you know, five kids and three cousins with their kids are over and they're all playing and you know then another family member comes over with their five kids so you're able to move the data around i mean that's what they're trying to get at now this does have four antennas but this is where it gets uh, good it's it's the 1.8 gigahertz quad processor and it's got one gigabyte of, gigabyte of ram and this is what you're going to see the difference between other routers out there that might be 6000 but they're not getting that throughput that you think so if you're transferring files and you're like why is it not maintaining the transfer file well a lot of it has to do with the processor and then the ram like where is the ram on this and how does this shape up at the same time we're looking at the bandwidth and and this is where you need to look at 
it 100%, this 160 megahertz bandwidth, does it exist when they say it's a Wi-Fi 6 router? Sometimes it doesn't. And they're, they're selling it off as a Wi-Fi 6 power, uh, router because there's a 280s on there and they're connecting those. But really the reality is it's coming back to how they're making up the additions of the speeds and you're not actually getting that. Now, uh, lastly, when we're looking at this, it is the ports that we want to focus on with a lot of people where, you know, to some it may not matter, to some it will. And this is what's going to be a defining factor of what you are trying to purchase at the end of the day. Because if you need more ports, then you're not going to go for an 86 or an 82U, you're going to stick with the 88U. And I want to put this really into perspective for you. If you need more, you can get a more um, robust router with more connections, of course, or you can get a switch. But at the same time, where are you going to be in five years? And this router should last you, in theory, for the next three to four years in, a, in accordance to how technology is moving. So do you really, really think that you're going to be using all the equipment you have now in two to three to five years and how would that look? And that's what you have to ask yourself. Again, lastly, when we're looking through this and you're going through all these different characteristics of what is being offered, I want to really make an emphasis of the features. Link aggregation is critical when you're looking at AX and you're connecting stuff to, say, a NAS drive. It's critical to have on there. This MooMimo and the traffic analyzer and adaptive QoS, I mean, this, I turn it on, but the adaptive QoS, I don't turn it on. I, honestly, if I had kids and they were all on the network and they were all streaming games, watching movies, this and that, I would probably turn it on. But if I'm in my office and I'm working with people, I don't really care to turn it on. Everybody's working off the same kind of stuff. So we're, we're okay there. I, I never see the improvement of it. Um, this gamer's private network, I've never used it. I don't play games that much, but people do, from what I'm seeing online, do use it. There's the Air Protection Pro. I, you know, like, like, does this help? Yes, you can use that. Now, in the idea of the protection that comes with this and with the security, it does work, but don't buy it because you want that. And don't buy it because of the parental controls. Everybody has some form of parental controls. The air protection and some of the virus checks and all this and that that come with um, uh, ASUS, it, it's great. I mean, it's great, but don't, uh, don't look at it as a, I need to have that so I don't have to pay for something else. Um, lastly, VPN clients, can, does it support that when you're looking at any router? And most of them will. And this is like most of the stuff will support it. So we can see from the idea of what's inside to the marketing, all manufacturers will market it in some form or way to please the audience they're trying to get to acquisition this unit they've provided. With this, it's, it's not a gamer's unit. It isn't, hands down, okay? But it can achieve gaming needs. It is a work course, yes. If you have a lot of people in the family and doing a lot of stuff online, you have a lot of devices, just look at all the devices in here just from the lamps. And then you look at it from a perspective of, hey, I have an office with a lot of people in there. Again, this is great. And if you're looking at it from a perspective of, do I need Wi-Fi 6? Well, how many devices do you have that are Wi-Fi 6 capable? And how many will you be getting in the future? And if those add up, then this is the one to go for or else there's other units with the AC versions, that older units that will do the job just fine for you. The Wi-Fi 6 comes into play because you want that speed when you are working on your network and you have the devices. Now, why would you buy this? The price point of this is $399 in Canada and $299 in the United States. So when we compare it to other units, why would you spend so much more money? And if you don't have a lot of Wi-Fi 6 devices, why would you spend that much when you can save like $100, $150 bucks on a similar unit? Same unit, actually, but it's older version. You look at it and you say to yourself, well, what do I actually need between this unit and the AX86U, as we put that in example, I will have a review linked above. Now, in this case, this has the multiple ports. We know that if we have a lot of hardware that needs ports, we're good to go. This is, this is what we're focused on. For me personally, I don't need that many ports anymore. You know, almost everything's gone Wi-Fi for me. So do I really need any more ports? Not necessarily. I have two ports that are link aggregate, two the Synology, and then, you know, everything else is not connected to anything on this. It's Wi-Fi.
you know, even the printers are going Wi-Fi. So what is it that you need? What is it that you want? And how does that fit the narrative of how much money you're going to spend? And at the end of the day, it comes down to future proofing as well. People will talk about this. Is it really future proofing? Well, no, not necessarily. However, when you have on the AX86U a 2.5 gigabit port, well, it changes things, which that will be all talked about in that video. In this case, you don't get that, but you do get the link aggregation. You do get the opportunity to use what's inside of this box. I can recommend it, no problem, but you need to look at that need and ask yourself, is that what I need or should I go save some money and go with a different unit? At the same time, look at all the manufacturers. I'm just with these guys because I've had the best experience and I've tested everybody else. I've had everybody else over the years, you know, 20 years of routers. You experience them all and you get biased on certain aspects. And now, granted B, you know, everybody upgrades, but you stick to what is best for you. And based on what your tests and this and that, it works out to your advantage to really look at everything from perspective of what people are saying and what you really need, want, and what your budget can afford. Now, up here, I will have the AX86U review. Up here, the 82 review is more flashy, and we'll go through that. Of course, leave your questions, comments, concerns, discrepancies below.